Hi guys, Crypto Lamy here. After my previous video on SPS price movement, I thought I'd bring you the sequel with DEC and forecasting its future price movement. So if price forecasts and technical analysis aren't your thing and you're only interested in the gaming aspect of Splinterlands, that's fine, I've got you. You can instead check out some of my Splinterlands strategy guides instead, which you should see above right now. However, to those who are interested, as a preface and a disclaimer, the analysis depicted in this video is solely my personal opinion and should not be considered financial advice. You should always do your own research and implement a rigid risk management plan if you intend on investing your own capital. So before we dig into the technical analysis and future price movement, it's important to understand DEC's tokenomics and fundamentals. So let's jump under the hood to see how the token is distributed and what factors could affect its price over the long term. If you're new to Splinterlands, rank battles are one of the main ways in which dark energy crystals are produced. There is always a pool of DEC rewards and that pool is constantly divided among the current winning players. This is why the amount of DEC that can be earned per win is always fluctuating. The amount rewarded to each player always depends on the total amount of DEC in the pool as well as several other factors, which we'll briefly go over here. Current league of play. So the greater your league, the greater your earnings. Total number of players battling. When fewer players are actually battling, your share of rewards are greater. ECR and DEC capture rate. Your maximum DEC can be earned at a capture rate of 100%. More about this coming up next. Win streaks. When in a win streak, a 5% DEC bonus is also awarded. Use of gold foil cards. So each gold foil card earns a 10% bonus of DEC. Use of alpha and promo cards. So each use of an alpha and promo card will also earn a 10% bonus. And then lastly, there's guild bonuses. So depending on the level of your guild's quest lodge, you can earn a bonus of up to 20%. So how is DEC distribution determined? Essentially, this is done through a player's energy capture rate or ECR for short. This is the rate at which our rewards diminish every time a ranked battle is played, whether it's a win or a loss. The good news is though that this gradually regenerates over time. Each battle played will cause your ECR to be reduced by around 1%, which can cause ECR to drop significantly when many battles are fought in quick succession. This will obviously result in reduced DEC earnings per win. I guess one of the main reasons that this feature has been implemented was to curb the earnings of bots who could essentially play 24 seven and farm all the reward pools. So now that we know our ECR regenerates at a rate of around 1% per hour, we similarly know that in order to receive maximum potential and increase our daily earnings, it would be prudent to play around 25 battles per day as this will allow your DEC to refill to 100% within the next 24 hours, thus receiving the most amount of rewards going forwards. So what does the future hold for DEC? Well, we know that the future is strongly influenced by the past, and you may or may not know that DEC was designed to be a stablecoin within the Splinterlands ecosystem of tokens. Originally, it was meaning to have a pegged value of 1000 DEC to one US dollar. And with that, the daily reward pool for DEC that can be earned in ranked battles was originally meant to be 1 million DEC per day. But this reward pool has fluctuated based on the current market value of DEC. Since the game's tremendous growth in player base, more DEC tokens are being minted each day than ever before. Currently, there are 12.5 times more DEC tokens being minted than the token was designed for, meaning over 12 million DECs being minted per day to reward players on the battlefield. This increase is directly proportional to the amount DEC has deviated from its intended value. Now there are mechanisms in place to burn DEC and regulate the token supply, but these aren't at all meaningful and it's unlikely that they ever will be. Firstly, there's purchasing of mini set packs, such as Essence, Orbs, Dice, or Rift Watches when it comes, which are currently not in effect. Purchasing of skins, and there aren't actually that many on the skin market at the moment anyway. Purchasing potions, and we all know that the potions risk to reward ratio has been nerfed and are no longer worth the DEC cost. So players aren't exactly purchasing them anyway. And lastly, guild contributions. So all the DEC sunk into the guild's buildings are burnt as well. So is this sustainable and where do I see DEC going in the future? One of the reasons DEC is trading so much above the peg value is because one DEC gives one airdrop points. 
So even if the token wasn't initially designed to increase in value, there is still value within the token and people are willing to hodl to realize that value in the form of SPS airdrops, because we all know that there is definitely value in SPS. So what happens when there is more supply than demand? <laughs> well, this isn't actually an economics lesson, guys, but if the market price is above the equilibrium price, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded, thus creating a surplus and with it lower prices. So it is very possible that the increase in price of DEC is not sustainable. As once airdrops cease to exist and the value seen in airdrop points is lost, we may see increased selling pressure and a subsequent dump. Short term though, I have a bullish outlook because of those associated and aforementioned benefits received. Let's have a look at that bullish outlook now by doing some technical analysis and price forecasting. So firstly, we have diagonal trendline support running across here. Now let's put in our motive wave counts and corrections. Got our running flat here and our zigzag here. Now we'll look for patterns in DEC. So I can see a head and shoulders reversal pattern here. This was confirmed by the bearish divergence on the RSI. So we'll likely see a drop of that head and shoulders pattern to around the 161.8 to 200% FIB level. So let's check that out now. And yes, so we precisely hit the 200% level. Uh, we've since seen some consolidation. So it's looking like the reversal is now complete. Now let's look for horizontal support and resistance lines to see where price could take us within our supply and demand zones. We can also look at the Fibonacci relationships of the waves to see if we have the correct wave counts. So in this greater wave count, we should see a drop to around the 61.8% level, which will be around the cluster of our forecasted head and shoulders pattern. Let's check that out now. And yes, we can see it perfectly married up as well. We can now say with a high degree of certainty that we are currently finishing wave two and pushing into wave three, which is generally an extended wave. So let's now look at how wave three could potentially look and the longer term wave count. Inversely, if this trough of 0.0094 along with the diagonal trendline support is broken, it's a possibility that we are currently on B wave of our ABC corrective pattern and a further drop will ensue, but this is highly unlikely. Let's look at the wave count of the short term. So it's likely we're gonna push into this supply zone, break through, it's gonna turn into a demand zone and then we'll push into the next supply zone where we'll most likely see some resistance as well. So guys, that's it for me for now. If you enjoyed my content, please make sure you like and subscribe so you can receive further updates. But other than that, I will see you on the blockchain.